computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 17 seconds and counting. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go for main engine start, main engine start, 2, 1, booster ignition, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery. The Space Shuttle begins the journey back into orbit. Discovery completes its roll. The shuttle now heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. This view from a camera on the external tank's liquid oxygen feed line showing the bird's eye view of Discovery as it races towards space, a star-spangled start to Discovery's mission. Discovery's three liquid fuel main engines now throttle back to 67% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Discovery already three and a half miles in altitude, one and a half miles downrange, traveling almost 750 miles an hour. Everything looking good on the bird. 57 seconds into the flight. Engines beginning to rev up. Standing by for the throttle up call from Capcom Steve Frick. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. Private, go at throttle up. Sounds UHF only. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Steve Lindsay. Expected data hits, it'll clear shortly. Copy. Lindsay joined on the flight deck by pilot Mark Kelly, flight engineer Lisa Nowak, and mission specialist Mike Fossum. Mission specialists Pierce Sellers, Stephanie Wilson, and Tomas Ryder of the European Space Agency down on the mid deck. Ryder headed for six months on the International Space Station. One minute, 47 seconds into the flight, 22 miles in altitude, 18 miles downrange, traveling 2,600 miles an hour, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed, guidance now converging. Discoveries on board computers commanding the main engine nozzles to swivel, aiming the shuttle for its precise target in space for main engine cutoff. And we should have a good forward link now on S Band. And you sound good. Two minutes, 35 seconds into the flight, 39 miles in altitude for Discovery, 49 miles downrange, traveling 3,200 miles an hour. Discovery now flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, those power plants draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's fuel tank. Copy, two engine Maroon. That call from Capcom Steve Frick indicating should we lose a main engine, we can make our trans-oceanic abort target at Maroon, Spain, but all three main engines are humming along, along with the auxiliary power units and the three power-producing fuel cells. Booster officer here in Mission Control confirms three good main engines, Discovery straight as an arrow, speeding toward a date with the International Space Station on Thursday. Three and a half minutes into the flight, Discovery now 53 miles in altitude, 100 miles downrange, speeding along at a clip of more than 4,000 miles an hour. Discovering nearing the point of negative return where the shuttle would be too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Discovery Houston, negative return. Copy, negative return. Four minutes, eight seconds into the flight, Discovery 61 miles in altitude, 150 miles downrange, 5,000 miles an hour is at speed. The environmental systems officer reports a good flash evaporator system activated, providing cooling for Discovery's avionics until the time that we open the payload bay doors an hour and a half into the flight.
More than halfway to orbit now at the 4 minute 39 second point into the flight. Discovery 65 miles in altitude, 200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Discover Houston, no action on the left dome's tank P. It was due to the left dome's accumulator, but it's back up to a good pressure. Yeah, we see that, Houston. Roger, no action. That call, an instrumentation issue, no impact. Discovery in good shape, 5 minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. 255 miles downrange, traveling almost 7,000 miles an hour. Discovery soon will be rolling to a heads-up position through the swiveling of its main engines, enabling the shuttle to gain more favorable communications through the tracking of data relay satellite as it heads uphill. Houston, press to ATO, select Istris. Roger, press to ATO, selecting Istris. Discovery Houston, single engine, Ops 3. Single engine, Ops 3. Those calls indicating that we can make our uh, minimal Orbital cutoff targets in the event of a dual engine failure. Roll to heads up uh, in the plain view of this camera on the liquid oxygen feed line. Everything looking good for Discovery. Six minutes, 11 seconds into the flight. Discovery Houston, single engine Istris 104. Roger, single engine Istris 104. That call indicating that we can make our uh, transoceanic abort targets in the event of a dual engine failure. However, all three engines on Discovery continue to function normally, along with the auxiliary power units and the fuel cells. Six minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Two minutes of powered flight remaining for Discovery. Discovery Houston, press to Miko. We show a nominal shutdown plan. Your go for the plus X and go for the pitch maneuver. Deputy Press to Vico, go for the plus X, go for the uh, pitch maneuver, and uh, not Vico. Those calls acknowledged uh, by Steve Lindsay, Discovery's commander, indicating with Discovery now 516 miles downrange that we can make our main uh, engine cutoff targets, uh, all three engines, in good shape, and that uh, Lindsay will be given the green light to pitch up Discovery to allow uh, umbilical well photography of the external tank after it is discarded. Seven and a half minutes into the flight, Discovery's main engines soon will be throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its seven crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Discovery currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles a second. Discovery traveling 14,000 miles an hour, 675 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, about 40 seconds of powered flight remaining. Eight minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Everything looking good on Discovery. Standing by for main engine cutoff. That will be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. The booster officer reports that we have main engine cutoff. Standing by for external tank separation. External tank separation confirmed. Commander Steve Lindsay now maneuvering Discovery to the correct orientation so that video and digital stills of the external tank can be captured by cameras embedded in the shuttle's umbilical well. A smooth ride to orbit for the shuttle Discovery embarking on what is expected to be a 13-day mission. In a couple of minutes, astronauts Mike Fossum and Stephanie Wilson will begin several minutes of video documentation. Showed a nominal Miko. Ohms one is not required. Yeah, copy and concur, yes. 
Fossum and Stephanie Wilson will begin uh, several minutes of video documentation and photography of the external tank that has been now discarded. Discovery will be about 1,450 feet away from the tank at that time. Fossum will record video using a PD-100 camcorder. Wilson will use a digital camera with a 400-millimeter lens. All of that will be downlinked about three and a half.